Hi Tilly! Today I'm going to show you how I made this miniature canyon by hand and from scratch and I've used it to shoot those images. For this project I was really inspired by the Antelope Canyon. I always wanted to go there but I thought instead of traveling to Arizona to see it I'm going to create my own little canyon so I can enjoy it from the comfort of my workshop. So in this tutorial today I'm going to show you as usual all the steps and processes. It's going to be a shorter tutorial because it's an easier project so that's good news. The main material I've used to create this are cardboard, aluminium wire, aluminium mesh and air drying clay. Add a little bit of paint and some sand and you've got yourself a canyon. So let's get started. So I've started this project with a big piece of cardboard and I marked up some components for my canyon. I decided to go for five different components and I marked them up with a marker pen. I knew I'm going to shoot those images with a very special lens, Laura Prob, which have this kind of long tube shape and I wanted to make sure it can get in and out of the canyon without touching the walls. So I took a piece of leftover cardboard roll which was inside some aluminium foil and it's roughly the same size. And I used this to play around with my drawing and make sure the tube, therefore the lens, can get in from different directions. So it gives me some option when it comes to shoot those images. Then I cut two pieces of cardboard that were a bit smaller than the overall outline of each shape. I glue them together with a hot glue gun so I have two layers of cardboard as a base and then I start to build upwards and I've used more cardboard and make sure I bend it vertically so I have more strength and it stay up. Once I've bent it, I use the hot glue gun and I make sure it sits nicely within the shape and is smaller than the overall outline. Now you can see all the components, they stay upwards, they have some strength to them and there's lots of gap in between them so I have lots of room to play with. Then I took my hot glue gun and some wire, 3 mm thick and as you can see I drop a little bit of a hot glue and then insert my wire into the cardboard. Then I bend it upwards and that starts to give me a structure to sculpt my canyon. Then I took each piece of wire and start bending and sculpting them one by one. And as you can see, I've bent the last part so I can insert it back into the cardboard from above. And then I took my time to sculpt each shape, make sure it was an interesting shape. Not all the wire needs to be the same. I position all my components next to each other so I make sure I still have some space and I don't have the curves fighting each other from one canyon to the next. Then I've used more wire, a bit thinner this time, and I start to go around each of the thicker wire to start to create a structure so it gives it more strength. Then I use some aluminium mesh. You can find different aluminium mod mesh out there. Honestly, most of them will do the job. So I've laid my piece flat and I've cut a piece of aluminium mesh that is bigger. I bend the bottom part and use some duct tape to make sure it stays firmly against the cardboard. Then I put it upward and start sculpting it. I made sure I have some really nice interesting shape and that it will stay strongly against the wire to hold it and give it more strength. Then I use some dust terracotta air drying clay. I've used probably 24 kilos of that stuff. The first mission was to flatten it, so I cut each kilo in two pieces, flatten them with my roller and then apply it onto the mesh. And I took some time to make sure that I was pressing all along so that the clay will really get into the mesh and grab it. It needs to hold onto it, otherwise it's just going to fall apart later on. I pressed with my fingers so that different layers that I'm adding were blending with each other. Then I've added more shapes and volumes. So I roll some piece of clay like a little snake and I start to applying it here and there to create some kind of visual movement with the rock. If you look at reference images of Canyon, you have those shapes sticking out a bit. So it creates much more interest if you start to build up. 
Then I wet my finger with water and I start to smooth the whole thing. I made sure I still keep the top of the added shape sharp because I wanted some contrast. Otherwise, everything just blended a bit. I wanted to have some more interesting shapes sticking out. Then to create the texture, I've used some Q-tips. I made sure the clay was well wet and then I've used three Q-tips at the time, dipped them into water and then pressed them against the clay. It was a bit tricky at first to make sure that those three Q-tips stay together firmly, but after a while it started to get easier and you start to get really interesting lines into those rocks. Later on, I went back with some sculpting tool to add some thinner line and add more detail into this rock. I build up all the different components of my canyon one at a time and I place them against each other to make sure that by the time the clay is added, I don't have part of the canyon fighting each other. You still have some space in between for the light to get through. I think it took almost a week to dry fully. Then I start to work with the paint. So I applied two coats of acrylic paint. I went a bit too yellowish and too light to start with, but anyway, at least it gave me a base. Then I've added a bit more orange and start to do a thick wash. So applying some diluted acrylic paint and remove it straight away with some wet paper towel. So once it's dry, you can see it transform it already, but I needed to go further. So I've done another thick wash with some more of the raw sienna color and I remove it as well with the wet paper towel. When it was completely dry, I use a thick brush and a tiny bit of beige acrylic paint. I remove most of the paint on a piece of paper and then apply it on the highlight and texture so that I stand out more. Then I took a big piece of plywood, 12 mm thick, and I start applying my component. And then I went a bit more precisely into exactly where they need to be on that piece of plywood. So I went back to my cardboard tube, went in and out, start to get an idea of what exactly my camera is going to see and how I need to arrange my component to create the most interesting image. Then before I start putting some sand, I knew it was going to get messy, so I've used some leftover piece of balsa wood and I super glued them on the edge to try somehow to limit the amount of sand that's going to come off of this set. I started with some rough sand, which was good to give me some texture, but the color was way off, so I thought, okay, let's try with white sand. The grain was even bigger, so it didn't help with the texture. And even though I tried to mix it up, the color still didn't match. So I've used a different scent. This one was thinner, so that helped with the texture, but still not happy with the color. So I knew I needed to think outside the box. And the magical ingredient to get the redness and the thinness that I was looking for? Cinnamon! Yes, I went into my kitchen cupboard and I found the magical ingredients. And I was much happier with how it was starting to look. So I went back to the supermarket and got three more of those cinnamon to top it up. And the last bit that I've added on top is made with static grass, grass glue and a static grass applicator. And I create those little tough, tough, I'm not sure how it's called, to just add a bit more contrast at the top of my canyon. And there you have it. The canyon is all done. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. In the next video, I'm gonna show you some behind the scenes, so the equipment, the setup that I used to shoot those pictures. Take care.